Hello everyone, welcome back to Anonymous World. Hope you all are doing well. So today is December 14th and day 14 of Advent of Cyber 3rd edition is out. So let's see what we have in day 14. Okay, so day 14 is networking, dev and secure ops. Okay, so first let's start our machine and our attack box. You can use your virtual machine. Okay, let's see this story. So MacDev, the head of the dev, dev team, sends an alarming email stating that they are unable to update the best festival company's external web application. Okay, so without this update, no one can view the best festival company's plan. So the team has been using a CI CD server to automatically push out updates to the server, but the CI CD server has been compromised. So can you help them get their server back? Okay, so the server of best festival companies has been compromised. We need to get it back. So learning objectives for this room. First, understanding the CI CD concept, overview of risk associated with it, and having a basic understanding of CI CD exploitation vectors. So now the first thing is come, what is CI CD? So CI CD are two terms which often come up when talking about software development and DevOps. CI stands for continuous integration. It is the process in which software source code is kept in a central repository such as GitHub and every changes are stored, stored in this particular central repository to avoid ending up with different versions of the same, same, same code. Then CD stands for continuous delivery. Uh, it is the following step of the continuous integration model where code is automatically deployed to the test pre-production or production environments. Sometimes it is also known as continuous development deployment. Okay, so you can go through CI CD and do more research on it. Now there are some risks associated with uh, CI CD. So let's see. So it is an integration approach seems to be an effective way to mitigate risks that may result from manually aggregating changes made to the code, manually testing them and later on manually deploying the updated version. Okay, so some risks should be taken into consideration. So our goal would be to uh, uncover weakness in the automation process. This can vary from file permission to configuration errors made when installing any CI/CD automation software. Okay, so there are some major risks given below, which are security, permissions, keys and secrets, user security, and at last default configuration. So you must go through all the points carefully now the main part the Grinch CI CD so the Grinch has put his own server of CI CD's pipeline in place he has used bash scripts and scheduled jobs to automate the process so let's dive in first thing visit the visit the given IP from your browser and it will show that Grinch is waiting for the loot but not here okay so let's visit our given IP Okay, so it's 10.10.28.46. Let's go. Okay, waiting for the loot somewhere else, but this works. Okay, so nothing's here. Okay, at this stage, we can run a derp scan to discover the admin page, which looks more promising. Okay, so let's do a derp scan. Derp, then our IP. Okay, let's see. Okay, so we got our first page which is admin. So let's see what's an admin. Okay, the, this page will update regularly and so the content of the loot folder. So we can see there are four files, def not notice.txt, notice.txt, test.txt and then test2.txt. So this is mm, this is an iframe that refers to the ls.html page. This page seems especially close to the output from running the ls command. Okay, let's go ahead. Connect to the target machine using in-browser access or via SSH with the credentials below. 
so either you can use ssh or you can use the inbuilt machine okay so let's do ssh okay okay ssh then username at the rate our ip okay our password is password one okay so we are in now navigating to the hope the grinch scripts folder and running the ls command will show the most of the scripts in the folder are not accessible by the maxkd user okay so let's see now we are in maxkd let's do ls okay let's go back so we need to go in the grinch now we have three folders desktop loot and scripts so we need to navigate to scripts okay so there are four scripts which are check ssh clean clean.sh loot.sh and test.sh and scripts in the folder are not accessible by the maxkd user so let's see the permissions of every file we can use ls hyphen al okay so we can see every file has every file is accessible by just root we can't access it okay the content of the loot.sh scripts gives us a clear understanding of the ls.html file we have located earlier okay so let's see content of loot.sh at loot.sh okay so there is a script running ls ls command uh, ls is running on the folder home the grinch the loot which is stored in where wwhtml ls.html which is what we are seeing here so this is the ls.html which contains the uh, files present in the loot folder okay so let's see what we have to do the code is simple it runs the ls command and prints the output to the ls.html file okay now the grinch can browse the page from anywhere within the network to see the loot he has accumulated clever grinch I see. but however there seems to be a problem regarding the permissions of his continuous integration attempt skiddy can change the contents of the loot.sh file cool you can alter the loot.sh okay so now change the code in the file to print the contents of the etc shadow file okay so let's do that let's edit loot.sh okay so we need to print the contents of etc shadow okay so let's change it to cat etc Shadow control x y c okay so this will be conclusive proof that a permission configuration misconfiguration not only creates a threat for the ci process but can also be used to escalate our privileges so let's see our ls.html page let's refresh this okay so now you can see we uh, we are able to see cat uh, etc shadow file okay so let's go ahead now if you are interested in learning more about privilege escalation techniques you can visit linux privilege escalation room okay moving forward so this particular misconfiguration can be leveraged to read the contents of grinch's other scripts let's have a look at the check.sh script using the same vulnerability which we have used to read the etc shadow file okay let's change the loot.sh file again okay this time we are reading check.sh file so what was the location home the range then check.sh okay let's save this okay let's refresh this oh okay i think i made an error it's 
not in loot, it's in scripts. Okay, now save this. Okay, so within a couple of minutes, our page will be updated to reveal the code of check.sh script. Let's wait. Okay, so the page has been updated. Secret password reminder script v1. There is a file remindme.txt. So the script checks for the existence of a file named remindme.txt in the loot folder. And if it finds the file, it prints the Grinch Grinch password to an HTML file that will appear in our that will appear in pass.html. Okay, so Grinch memory isn't what it used to be. Grinch is growing weak. So alternatively, Skiri could create a file named remindme.txt in the home, the Grinch, the root folder, and wait for the automation to work its magic. Okay, so now uh, it's checking for remindme.txt for file in the loot folder. So we what we can do, we can create a file with the same name remindme.txt and uh, when it will find that particular file, it will print the Grinch password to an HTML file that will appear in our IP then in pass.html page. Okay, so let's try this. So let's go to root. Now we need to create a file remindme.txt. Okay. So our file is created. Okay, so now let's wait for the automation automation to work its magic. Let's go to our page. Pass dot html else share fast okay i think this is the password for the grinch okay so now can you share can you answer question four using this vector okay let's go ahead lessons learned so the cicd simulation aim to help showcase major types of vulnerabilities that are often seen in automation so a locally installed Jenkins application can have an unpatched component deployed for various optional reasons. Okay, so in the example above, we have seen folder permissions that were two lakhs. So mm, we have seen the low uh, SKD has low privileged uh, low privileges, but still he could write to Grinch's loot folder. Should we see could write to Grinch's loot folder? Then file permissions were misconfigured, improper key protection. Then installation was not secure. Cron jobs were regularly running tasks without any control for unauthorized changes. So let's answer the questions below. How many pages did the dub scan find with its default word list? Okay, let's see. Okay, so one, two, three, four, scanned four files, four pages, okay. How many scripts did you see in the home the Grinch script folder? Okay, I think it was four. Okay, one, two, three, four. Now, what are the five characters following dollar Sysology in Pepper's password hash? Okay, let's see. Okay, so we need to read the file again. Okay, so let's edit nano loot.sh loot again. Okay, so we need to replace this with etc shadow. Okay, so let's check our page again. Okay, so what are five characters following $6 G in Pepper's password hash? So it's GZUP4. GZUP4. Okay, sorry, it's so uh, ZUP42. Now, what is the content of the flag.txt file on the Grinch's, Grinch user's desktop? 
okay so let's go back okay so there is flag.txt file let's try to read we can let's see if we can read this or not okay so permission denied so we can read this file using the same vulnerability okay let's Scripts. Okay, we need to edit our script. Okay, so this time we will we need to read the flag. So it's present in home the range. Then desktop. Then flag.txt. Okay, so let's check our web page again. Okay, so we got our flag. Die Hard is the best Xmas movie. Okay, so let's enter our final flag. Okay, so we are done with our day 14, and that's it for this video too. So I will see you tomorrow in day 15. Mm -hmm.